We can't build more equitable classrooms just on goodwill. We have to build it through structure. We have to build it through training. Faculty don't often receive training in teaching in general, let alone inclusive teaching practices. Effective teaching practices in order to reach and teach all students must also be inclusive. And these are small, intentional things that you can do as an instructor. What faculty were really asking us for is, how do I do this? They needed some concrete teaching practices. I think it's important to involve the students in writing the ground rules. The purpose of the group contract is to kind of help you all think about how you want to, you know, function as a group. I use anonymous grading because it helps me to really focus on the actual writing or the assignment as opposed to the person. For all of my assessments, I offer double time. Most instructors are probably familiar with, you know, letters from disability services offices. I take that the next step and just offer it to everyone. It's very intentional that I create diverse groups. There's a countless amount of studies that shows the power of diversity of thought. I have them sign up for virtual study buddies. Class, we have a group of my former students who are going to tell you about some strategies that they employ to be successful in my class. You're going to actually review some of the feedback that students in the course um, from last semester or the advice that they offer you. A method that I like to use is open student hours. I ask them if they would like to share their pronouns with me and I share my own pronouns. You might want to put in parentheses the phonetic pronunciation. She set the tone in the beginning and I absolutely appreciated that. Equity-minded teaching, inclusive teaching, is simply good teaching. When I read these, here's what I'm going to be looking for. How could you tweak that sentence to take my feedback into consideration? I have put this into a three-page document that provides you with clear steps on how to conduct this assignment. What Transparency tries to do is to help faculty level the playing field so that all students have a fair shot to succeed with their academic work. When our work is transparent and they know what's expected of them, it really frees some of their time and energy up to then apply what I've asked them to learn. When I started using transparent guidelines, the submissions were better, they were easier to grade, and so it truly, it made the success rate probably bump up to around 80%. When you feel a little bit more secure about what it is that you're supposed to be doing or what's asked of you, you're more likely to be comfortable and say, all right, I'm gonna attack this assignment. I will be very open about experiences that I've had with stereotype threat or imposter syndrome. Showing students early draft, mid-draft writing is in service to helping the students realize that writing is a process. Day one is we talk about the growth mindset and brain science that our brain has ability to grow. There's gonna be times when you're stumbling down the stairs and you're just not mastered it yet. And I wanna be there and tell you like, yeah, you're not there yet and then you can try again. Communicate to them that you believe in them, that you support them, that you believe they can do it, that you know they can do it. Because guess what? You know they can. I'll give a little bit more feedback. Instead of just good job, I'm like, see, here's a good example of why you should consider yourself a good writer. I always have a list of student resources that are non-academic resources. I call it the Monday Motivator. Is there FAFSA scholarship help sessions? Are there uh, scholarship opportunities for them? I know sometimes it's a little scary going to these tutorial labs, so I'll be happy to go with you all as a group. We have to be intentional about each resource, our text, our assignments, to think about how will my student know they belong here. I actually present them a list of microaggressions uh, to see if they can identify the underlying meaning. I talk about uh, accessibility with my students in terms of them creating their work and making it accessible. I also make sure that any of the materials that I provide for them to read can be used using a screen reader. I think just querying your students about like how are my videos working for you? How are the slides working for you? I ask students, you know, who are some of the people that you like to read? 
Is my syllabus affirming to the communities that you represent? Oftentimes I'll bring in current people in the field so they can see people that look like them. Growing up some, as someone who has always felt like the other, I had to make my space. It was beautiful for her to establish that space first. Faculty that have training in inclusive teaching practices are more likely to retain their students. They perform better in the course academically and they are more likely to have a strong, positive feeling about the university as a whole. We're really thinking about how we can expand the pool of knowledge and the people who are receiving it. What could be better?